silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Keeping it raw, keeping it real, 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 Hey guys, how you doing? Hope everyone's good. Today's live is with Mr. George Pitts. Hello. Hey, how you doing, my man? Not too bad, sir. Yourself? Hey, not too bad. Just uh, enjoying this beautiful Sunday. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Just uh, just chilling, man, and enjoying the day. Okay, 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 okay. It's, it's good to hear that it's a nice day out there, man, because right now it's, it's cloudy, it's rainy, it's London, bro. It's London. Man, I love that kind of weather, man. That's my kind <laughs> of weather right there. Really? <laughs> Really? Oh man, I love I love the rain and the cloudy weather. I that's that's my weather right there. But why? <laughs> man, it's just relaxing, man. It's something about it. I love to read. Um, you know, so it just it's just something about that rain, man, that just allows me to really tap in. But it's hot yeah. here. It's about ninety five degrees. Ninety five you know, degrees. Yeah, and it's a dry heat here in Oklahoma, man. Oh, so God. Yeah, the weather here is very disrespectful, man. In the oh, summer. man. Oh, you're, you're in Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Fun times. Fun times, man. I've heard some nice things about that state. It's not too bad. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of in the middle. Uh, mm. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, cool, man. But first and foremost, man, thanks for joining me, sir. Now, I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. I really do appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. Um, obviously, me reaching out is because I've been following you for a while. And um, it's like, I think the latest one, the latest live that I watched of yours was when you were talking about how people can bring all their ideas together and kind of decide on what, what they want to follow. You know, if you have too many ideas in your head, how do you pick one and go with it? You right. know, and, and I, like for me, that's something that I struggle with a lot. You know what I mean? Like I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of concepts, but it's just like, which one do you go with? You know, and that that live was very effective, man. And I was very tempted to actually buy your your one on one coaching as well, you know, which I might still do. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, bro, I love everything that you've been doing so far. And one of the biggest things that inspired me was your story, man. It's like when you when I was listening to your story of how you had, you know your last job, you know the last yeah. job that actually left and what yeah. actually happened. You know, it's like what you know so. You know, let, so let me introduce you to the world. You know what I mean? So, Mr. George Pitts, do you are introducing yourself? Who is George Pitts? So, George Pitts, man, I'm a serial entrepreneur, um, personal finance and business coach, um, you know, father, husband, man of God. You know, I love all things, uh, you know, that just bring people together and help people win. Um, you know, what I do is I teach people how to, you know, look at their expenses, look at their finances. And once we kind of get that in, 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 in order, um, I like to take people through a process of learning what they can tap into that they already know or maybe what they don't know to make money. Um, as you heard with my story, the reason I'm so motivated about this is because my story, I'm not the first person that that happened to in 2009. There's a lot of people that, you know, that something like that has happened to, right? So yeah. my, my thing is I want to prevent as many people from going through that type of a pain as possible by teaching them the possibilities that they have to go out and, you know, teach other people what they know, or even just to tap into some other things, man, to build other streams of income. So you're not at the mercy of somebody else when it comes to how you provide for your family. Yeah, yeah, no, that's crazy. I mean, like, so I, I'm currently working at 9 to 5 myself. I've got, I've got a normal job, a um, salary paying job, whatever. And I think like most people, like you said, like my dream is to eventually leave that and to focus on what, you know, what my passions can bring me, you know, as an entrepreneur going forward, you know. But you, you briefly mentioned, you know, what happened to you in 2009. I mean, for a lot of my followers that don't actually know your story, do you mind just giving a quick overview of, you know, the reason you left your, your job and you decided to pursue entrepreneur, entrepreneurship? Yeah, so in, uh, in 2009, this was in December. It was about two weeks before Christmas. It was around December 10th, 10th or 11th or something like that. Um, you know, I, I started working at this place um, about three months prior. I was a contractor for a year. And then after my contract expired, they wanted to bring me on full time, but they didn't have a, an opportunity in the area that I was working. So they said, hey, how would you like to come and work in payroll? We love your work ethic. Everybody loves your personality. We would love to have you still stay a part of the company. I said, well, I've never done payroll before, but I'm definitely willing to learn, especially if it's going to you know, keep me an opportunity or whatever. They said, don't worry about it. We'll teach you. So I was in that job, man, for about two and a half months. I never got any training. 
you know, just kind of like a big, big manual. And they just said, you know, read over this and just, you know, here's the, here's the hotels you're going to manage. Um, and here's, here's, here's the payroll that you'll do. Mm -hmm. And so after about two and a half weeks, man, I, I was just struggling. So I went to my director and I said, Hey, um, you know, I've been here for about two and a half months. I haven't got any training. You know, some some people's deductions have been bad. Some people haven't got their checks. Of course, we were able to fix that and get it to them. But, you know, I know if I missed the check, it would hurt me badly. I don't want it to hurt somebody else. So mm -hmm. I need some training. Yeah. That lady looked me in my eye, man, and she said, I'm glad you came to me. I'm going to get you all the training that you need. I appreciate you for saying this because it shows your character and your integrity. We're going to make sure that you're very successful in this job. 24 hours later, which was the next day, I get my bag up, I'm leave, getting ready to leave, and my supervisor comes up to me and says, hey, George, let me walk you out. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm gonna grab my bag, wait on her to get her bag. She's like, hey, we need to stop by HR for a second. I need to drop this off and then we'll go. I said, okay. So we drop in there, it's about three, four minutes goes by, and then the director of HR comes out and says, Mr. Pitts, are you ready? It's like, what? You know, ready, ready for what, you know? And she kind of looked at me like, don't you know why we're here? You know, like she, she even looked confused Yeah. and she just kind of motioned me to her office. And so I'm looking confused. I walk in, I just, I'm standing up. She's like, you want to have a seat? I was like, uh, sure. So yeah. I sit down and she's like, so I understand that you're, that you're, you've decided, you know, the company and you have decided that, you know, you want to pursue other opportunities. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, your supervisor came in, said you had a, a talk with her and your director, and you just felt that it's best for you to pursue other opportunities right now, that this isn't the right job for you. I said, I never said that. And she yeah. looked at me like, are you kidding me right now? Yeah. So she kind of just sat back in her chair, crossed her arms, took a deep breath, and she just kind of sighed, and she started yeah. rubbing her forehead like this. You could tell she was like, you know, yeah. they just set us both up. Because yeah. she had no idea. Yeah. And uh, she said, look, let me just level with you. She scooted up and she looked at me and she said, look, we can say this was a big misunderstanding and you can go right back to work tomorrow, but here's what could happen. She's like, Oklahoma's an at-will state, so you can be terminated for any reason at all, right? Yeah. So she's like, you get terminated, it, this is going to go against you. You can't be rehired. You're, you know, it's, it, it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. She's like, I think you need to go ahead and accept the resignation, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you two weeks. Of, I'm going to give you uh, a month of severance pay. So you'll get a check for the next month every two weeks as if you still work here. That's about the best that I can do yeah. um, because I hate that this happened. And I'm sitting there like in disbelief, bro. Like I'm looking, I'm like, I'm still like, what is going on right now? Yeah. Like it's all still fresh. I'm, you know, even though she's talking kind of like I'm talking to you, yeah. I feel like she was talking 100 miles an hour. Yeah, There's just so much going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking, I, I got all this stuff going through my head. Like, you know, we live paycheck to paycheck right now. It's yeah. two weeks before Christmas. How am I going to find another job? What am I going to yeah. tell my wife? There's all these things going through my head. I'm just like, yo. Yeah. So she's like, but here's something I want you to do. She's like, I want you to, everything you just told me, because I told her what happened, what our discussion was. Yeah. She's like, I need you to put this on this form right here. I need you to write down every single thing that you said to her yesterday. Yeah. I said, okay. And, um, you know, I wrote it down, man, went to my car. I think I sat in that parking lot for 20 minutes, just staring out into space. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I went home, told my wife. And the turning point for me, I know this is kind of a long story, but the turning point for me was the next morning. My wife worked uh, 6 a.m. To, th to 3 o'clock every day. And so um, I used to go out to her car at five in the morning and sit in her car and warm it up because it was the winter time. So her car would get warm while she was getting ready for work. So when she came out, her car was warm. Mm. And so uh, when she came out to her car, gave her a kiss, she got in the car and drove off. And I remember watching her until I couldn't see her taillights anymore drive off. And I said to, the, I said to myself, my wife is going to work to take care of me. Yeah. I can't even take care of my wife anymore. Yeah. And I went to the room, man, crawled in bed and started really sleeping to a depression. Mm. And I just heard the spirit say, man, get up and go figure it out. Yeah. And that's kind of what I did. Yeah. Yeah. And then, man, that story was heartfelt, man. And then, you know, you literally did that, right? So you got up, you went to figure it out, you started training yourself. So I'm just going to fast forward the story for you, man. So you basically um, 
you learn um, about um, web design, right? So that was your first thing, right? So you learn about right. web design, how to design websites, and then you started checking like the ye the yellow pages. Or what do you guys call it over there? Uh, well, it's the yellow pages, but over here, uh, you know, it's just Google at the time. Uh, okay, we just fine. we just use Google for Google business listings. Right, right, right. So you started checking people's ads and stuff like that, and whoever right. put themselves up looking for ads, you you actually contacted them and said, "I can improve your website and improve your ads, etc." Right. Right, right. So what I would do is I would go on Google uh, because what it was was I went on this site, man. It was a forum. It was before social media was really a big thing. Right. And um, there was a guy that was teaching people how to build uh, what they call niche websites, which right. are websites for like, you know, here's how to build a website for a plumber. Here's how to build a website right, for an right, electrician. Right, 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 so we were building. And, and so it taught you how to do it in WordPress. So I learned it. Um, I learned it in about a week and mm -hmm. I built my first website. Then mm -hmm. he basically gave you this PDF to teach you how to go out and reach out to people. So mm -hmm. what I started doing was I would go on Google and I would search like plumbers in Oklahoma or electricians in Oklahoma, CPAs in Oklahoma. And if they, if they had a listing, but no website, I was calling them on the phone to try to offer their services. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, man, I wasn't getting much traction. People don't like cold calls, especially here in yeah. America. I don't know how it is there, but yeah. they don't like cold calls here. It's the same um, yeah. So at the time, man, there was this website called Craigslist. Craigslist and Craigslist right. at the time was 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 popping. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So what I did was I said, okay, let me reverse engineer this. So mm -hmm. I went to the services page of Craigslist and people who had postings for, hey, we'll do your taxes. Hey, you know, we do plumbing, we do this, we do that. If I didn't see a website, I would I would send them an email and say, Hey, uh, I would love to learn more about your services. I'm I'm possibly looking for a plumber, but I can't find your website. Can you give me your website name? You know, right. I, I understand that uh, I love looking at websites because I build websites and right, I just right, want to right. see what services you offer there. And I sent that same email to like hundreds of businesses. Everyone right? that didn't have a website of the, of the right. Home. Themselves. And so yeah. they would reach out back like, no, you know, some people would just write back and say, no, we don't have a website, but here's the services we had. Right. Some people would reach back out and say, hey, we don't have a website. Here's the services. But you mentioned you build websites. Can you tell me more about that? Right. And then right. they opened the door, man. And, and, you, went from there. and, then, yeah. and then you landed a big client who was a lawyer and she sent you yeah. the first big check to build her yeah. website and you took it from there. Yeah. Right. No, um, like your story is like, it was super inspiring, man. Super inspiring that... The biggest thing for me out of that story was like that feeling of being less than when you didn't have nothing. That feeling of being less than a man when you felt like, you know, your, your wife was kind of just, she didn't have the support system that you used to be able to provide as a man of the house, you know? And I feel like that's what our current climate is for a lot of people. Like a lot of people feel less than what they used to be because they've, they've come out of work. Like they don't have jobs because of COVID, as I'm sure is um, in the States and uh, around the world, thousands of people have lost their jobs right now, you know? Right. So, like, it's, it's kind of like a fight or flight thing. It's a make or break situation for a lot of people that either get lost in depression, like you said, you're kind of going into, or, you know, they pick themselves up and they go. Right. You know, one right. thing which I really commend you for is that you mentioned Christ, you know what I mean? You mentioned, you know, the power of Christ and everything that you do, and, you know, the power of religion in, in, in terms of motivating you to actually get up and do something. You know, the faith that you have in yourself and, and you have in your God and stuff like that, which is very admirable. So let's bring it to today then, right? With, with you know, the current situation, the current climate, like, what is your mentality with entrepreneurship? Like, do you think people should be looking more to it or less at it in terms of COVID-19, in terms of, you know, the job losses and stuff like that? Is it a good time to try and become an entrepreneur or not? I think it's the best time, and let me tell you why. Right. You've got everybody's attention right now. Right. You know, whenever, whenever uh, we went into quarantine, yeah. It was just like everybody's eyes open. Oh my God. Like every, you know, George and this person and that person, they've been talking about this for a long time. And like now people were like, yo, it's finally here. Mm. I don't know when I'm going to get a paycheck. You know, unemployment's not going to cover my bills. Yeah. And so, you know, people were really focused on, even though they've been hearing about entrepreneurship, e commerce, and business and all that other stuff for a long time. Now it was for the first time people were like taking it serious. Like mm. I need to do something about this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that this is the best time to do it because what's happening is that here in the United States, the government's giving money. It seems like every couple of months, yeah. they're about to give everybody here another stimulus check again. Right. And right. so for me, you know, you've got two options. 
you can either give it all back or you can you can figure out how to build on it, right? Right, right. Because at the end of the day, most people are just going to give it all back. They're, whether mm -hmm. they buy shoes, clothes, car, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. They're just going to give all that money back. But there needs to be some people that need to join what I like to call the minority because the minority are the people who have businesses that are running things. So my thing is everyone has a talent, whether right. you're, you know, whether you are really big on your health and fitness, whether you're really big on finances, you're really big on dating or fashion. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. things are something that people are trying to get to that level that you're on as a hobby. You know right. what I'm saying? It's a right. passion. Your passion and hobbies will pay you. It's just mm -hmm. all about a person understanding that you, first, a person who has that knowledge has to understand that that knowledge is valuable. Mm -hmm. You're the first person that has to get that into your head mm -hmm. that I, what I know, someone else needs. Mm -hmm. Once you start to believe that, it projects off of you when you post, when you yeah. go live, when you're doing right. videos. It projects off of you your confidence so right. that people start to believe he has what I need, she has mm -hmm. what I need. But if you're just kind of lukewarm with it, like, I'll go ahead and do it, but I don't think anybody wants it. That's going to project so people ain't going to believe it. Right, 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 yeah. right. Interesting. So so you're saying, like, in terms of entrepreneurship, instead of looking, like, far and wide in terms of ideas, look within and what is that I'm actually good at? What is my thing that I actually enjoy? And look that's, at how to monetize that going forward. That's the exact thing, man. Listen, I tell people all the time, people don't need more ideas. Mm -hmm. They got every idea you'll ever need, you already have in you. You just have to start asking yourself the right questions. Right. That's just like what's so good about hiring a coach. If you hire a good coach, a mm -hmm. coach is not going to suggest anything to you. They're going to bring it out of you to where you're going to be making the suggestions. You're going to be like, why didn't I think of that? It's yeah. because you need the right person pulling the right things out of you. Yeah. And so, you know, the reason I feel that people need to focus on entrepreneurship right now is yeah. because there's always going to be more consumers than there are capitalists. 100%. Um, you know, there's, there's always going to be, it's always going to be 80-20. 20% yes. of the people here are going to be capitalists. That's why you yeah. got billionaires and, and multimillionaires sure. because you got a small group of people in, you know, over 327 million people in, in the state of, in, in the United States. Hmm. But like 20 million are, are business owners. The hmm. other 310 million are yeah. consumers. Yeah. So yeah. the thing is, is that, you know, someone might look at me and say, well, George, you know, there's like everywhere I look, somebody's teaching personal finance. But there's over 80 million people with bad finances. I can't even deal with 1% of those people. Very you know what I'm very saying? Very I can only deal with maybe a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of a percent of those people. So, Dude, I, yeah, that's that's a huge realization for a lot of people, man. For me as well, you know, because sometimes, you know, you think, you know, I want to do something, but someone else is already doing it. But you're forgetting the fact that just because, you know, that person might be in your circle and you're looking at the world as that person is doing everything, but the world's much bigger than what you see right there. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of consumers just waiting for your service. There's not enough out there, right. you know? That's what just, you need. Just think about it like this. Jeff Bezos right now is the richest man in the world, right? Right, right. Before he was even, before we knew who he was and before we knew who Amazon was, it was eBay. Yeah, very true. Let that sink in. Very, and very then true. when we knew about eBay and we knew about Amazon, we didn't yeah. know about Pin or, or we didn't know about Etsy. We didn't know about yeah. Poshmark. We didn't know about any of these, and yeah. they're all still popping. So true. the thing is, is that you can either be on the sidelines and be like, "Well, there's already ten men on the field," or you can yeah. be the eleventh person on the field yeah. and get in the game. That's yeah. it, you know. And that sentiment is so encouraging, you know, to so many people that look at things like, "Oh, there's no point," you know, "I can't get in the game; it's too late." That's so encouraging, man. So. One, one of the questions I have right now, then, like, it's like, you know, obviously a lot of these things are in the secrets of coaching that, you know, that you get into once people sign up to your services, right? But what is that, what, is, what are the steps that someone should take to, to figuring out what their skill sets are? You know, how do we figure out what you're actually good at? You know, like, what's the mentality you need to have to be able to pull out that one thing and decide? Let's say you're someone like me, and I feel like I'm multi-talented, multifaceted. You know, which one do I go for? You know, do I go for all? Do I go for one? You know, how do I put my all into something, if that makes sense? Well, the, the, thing that I, the thing that I would tell a person is, if I'm coaching them, is, you know, write down up to 10 things that, you're, that, that you just love. Up to yeah. 10. So whether it's, whether it's only three things you can come up with, seven or the full 10, yeah. write those 10 things down. Yeah. And then on each one of those things, number them from one and two. 
right? right. One being one that you're super, that, that, that you know just very, very well, and two that you just kind of, I know it well, you know, yeah. but not as well as I would. And then take all those ones and do the same thing again, one mm -hmm. to two. Take them again until you get to one last thing. That yeah. one last thing, you should be like, I love this thing. Uh, I know it very well. You should be overly confident that you could deliver on this thing if you had 10 people willing to pay you to teach them. Right. And then what right. you do is you figure out, how do, I, who, how do I convey the information that I know about this niche to the people? So let's say that that is, you know, um, let's say that is something like health and wellness, right? Let's just take right. that for instance, right? So how do I convey health and wellness to the people? Well, you start thinking about what are some problems that you had that got into it? So either you write a letter to your, your previous self, meaning that when you're making content, if you were a person that was overweight before and now you're not, what was the turning point for you? What was the things that triggered you to, do, to make the decision? And then what you do is you go back and you say, okay, here's what I would tell myself to start sooner than what I did. And that's what your posts need to be. You're not necessarily posting to yourself. You're yeah. posting to the other people that was just like you years ago. Just like you, right, when you And what's going to happen is those people that are there right now, they're going to be like, oh, my God, this is speaking to That's me. me. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then what happens is you start to get the DMs. You start to get the testimonies. You start to get people like the last thing you just post, they start commenting and liking, engaging, sharing. And then once you build that trust with them, because you don't want to just come out with something and then try to sell something to me. You need to build that trust. You need to build that transparency. And most of all, you need to connect with your audience. Once you connect going. with them and then they start asking you, when you start seeing more people, well, how do I do that? How should I get my meal plan together? How should my yeah. workouts be? How should this be? That's when you start developing those products unless you've already done it. And yeah. then you start to introduce that, introduce those to your audience. Okay. Okay. No, that's, that's really helpful, man. So the idea is to, you know, list out what you think or what you know you're good at or think you're good at, prioritize it, put it on, on levels of what you're really good at versus what you're kind of good at. And then put yourself in that position of the, the, the person that might need that, what, where you were in the beginning right. of your right. process, and then flip right. it. Okay. Yeah. And then it. once you do that, and you've yeah. got a good system in place, you're, you're, you're coaching, you're doing that stuff, go back to that list. What was the second to last thing that was the one? Mm. Now you can pull that back in and start offering that. Right. And then right. build that up, do that thing, go back to the list. And as you can see, you're going back to the list, you know, maybe a couple times a year or every year. And eventually yeah. you're going to build this, 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 you know, enterprise yeah. that's literally going to be just unmatched. You know, people right. know they can come to you for health and fitness. They can come to you for eating. They can come to you for mindset. They can come to you for all these different things that you already made a list of before. Yeah. You just prioritize which ones you're most confident with going with. Okay. And, okay. And you just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat each time you want to. That's it. I'm on the something. Okay, that's pretty dope, man. Um, one thing, one element which of, of yours that I don't want to um, slide past is the financial element of things, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's the same over there, <laughs> but the stereotype, which is true for the most part, for some reason, that a lot of um, people of color over here, black people, were not very good at finances. You know, majority of people, you know, from university up until adulthood, we tend to be in debt. You know what I'm saying? Like, for some reason, I think I know yeah. the reasons, the various socioeconomic situations, whatever, right? But a lot of us tend to be in debt. And yeah. um, could you give me a, a, a brief highlight or a brief idea of the, of the importance of finance right now, especially with COVID-19, you know, the importance of saving, the importance of, you know, I guess having a backup line, if anything, and then especially when you talk about entrepreneurship, you know, how important is that? What do we need to, I guess, take into consideration before we embark on those kind of journeys? So... For me, um, you know, I, I try when I when I when it talk when it comes to finance and business, you know, I like to refer back to the Bible because a lot of people think when they hear about business, especially people of color like ourselves, the first thing we think is scam. You know what I'm right. saying? Hey, I'm going to teach you how to get, invest. Oh, that's a scam. Hey, I'm going right. to teach you how to sell on e-commerce. Oh, that's a scam. Right? It's, it's always a scam. So the thing is, is that you know, when it comes to your finances, finances aren't a scam. Either you got it or you don't. Right. But one of the things you have to do is you have to find a way to, uh, you know what I'm saying? You have to find a way to make your finances grow right. and make your finances work for you. Those yeah. are the two things that we have to focus on every day, how mm -hmm. to make them grow and how to make them work for you. Your mm -hmm. finances are just like soldiers. They go out and fight battles every single day for you. 
right? Mm. So if you don't properly train your soldiers how to fight those battles, mm. they're going to continue to lose them, and you're going to keep losing soldiers. So yeah. the way that I tell people to do is the first thing you have to do is understand how much money you got coming in. Most okay. people don't realize how much money they make. If you right. really think about it, a person could start at a job 10 years ago making $50,000 a year, right? right? And they get an average of a 3% raise every year for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that, they've made 30% more 10 years later, but they're still living paycheck to paycheck now like mm -hmm. they were 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah. if you take 30% of a $50,000 salary, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, what is that, uh, $7,500? So you're at 60, you're, you're almost over $60,000 mm. in income mm. that you don't have any accountability for. Mm. So first of all, you want to sit down, write down how much money you got coming in consistently. The next thing you need to, you need to figure out is where is this money going? Okay, mm -hmm. if I've got $4,000 coming in and I add up all my bills and my bills are only $2,500, where's yeah. this other $1,500 going? Because okay. that's over $15,000 a year that I can't account for. Right, yeah, yeah. And once you understand where it's going, you need to figure out, okay, where it's going, is it benefiting me? Is it something mm -hmm. that if I had an emergency, is this, where it's going, is this going to allow me to tap into that? Or is it going mm -hmm. to something that I've already had the hangover, I threw up all the alcohol, I've had mm -hmm. enough of the food poisoning, you know, the clothes I didn't gave the goodwill from last year because I don't even want to wear them no more, right? Right. Obviously, that's not where it's going. So you need to figure out where can I put where this money yeah. to continue to grow. Yeah, that's interesting, man. Because, yeah, like, it's it's weird. I think, like, we don't, for some reason, we don't sit down and think like that. Like, I know um, a lot of people are talking more and more now about spreadsheet in your life. You know, look at the profits, look at the losses, look at the income, the outgoings, etc. Right. You know, tracking your finances. But a lot of us don't actually take the discipline to actually do that. But I, I know it's really important because... Over here, for instance, like um, Uber is a big thing. So, like, we'll sit down and then I go through my like my, my outgoings for the month, and I look at how much I spend on Ubers. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, like <laughs> that's a lot of savings I could have made, you know, if if I decide to use public transport, or if I decide to stay put, or if I decide to be patient, or maybe I just put that money together and I get I get a car, you know. Yeah. It's it's one of those situations, man. And with business, right, entrepreneurship and 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 the financial considerations, right. Um, where where should people look at throwing the funds in more? Is it more at like learning something, or is it more at marketing? Is it more at building a business, or is it more at paying a partner for things, or is it more at like you know the accessories that they need kind of thing? Like, how do you you know? My thing. So my thing when it comes to money is money should never be put disposable income should never be put in just one thing. So okay. for me, let's say I got five hundred dollars left over every two weeks. Right. right. You get paid every two weeks like they do here in the States. Right. Two fifty should go towards personal develop me learning something and two fifty should be going to savings. Money markets, okay. high interest yield account, like not like just putting it in my checking account that I can get access to any time, but something right. that's gonna generate interest. So that would be a money market account, municipal bonds, right. um, index funds, e exchange traded right. funds, that kind of thing. Right. A lot of people like to think stock. And my thing is, I don't recommend someone go and invest into stocks if they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because, it's, you know, you're investing into one company that could be good or bad. Versus yeah. when you're investing into like an index fund or an, or an ETF, you're investing into multiple things. Or even the S&P 500, you're investing mm -hmm. into a group of things. So everything would have to go bad yeah. in order for you to really yeah. choose. And that's less likely to happen than that. Correct. Saying. Correct. Yes, so, um, you know, so I would recommend 250 going towards, you know, like a stock investing, you know, or, you know, like index, ETF, something like that that's going to grow that money. And okay. then 250 needs to go towards personal development. That's going to be, you know, coaching to figure something out or maybe learning about e-commerce or learning about something that's out there that people are making money from mm -hmm. that you can in turn make money from. So you spend 250, let's say you spend... 250 to go in and, and, and learn about uh, e-commerce, right? Or, mm -hmm. or like I have an e-commerce class, I'll say 125. So you learn about e-commerce, you get this knowledge. When you get your next paycheck, now you've got 250 going back to the thing, and then you've got <laughs> 250 that you could take, and you could go and buy product now to put right. on e-commerce. And then you start selling that product. If that product you can get, you can get $250 worth of product that you can sell for five to 700 bucks. Right. Now you've got another avenue that's slowly building money for you. 
Right, right. On right. top of you got two fifty accumulating on this other side, which is drawing. Right, right, right. And right, before right. you know it, after three to six months, you could have built a second income that matches your primary source of income, or at least equals about half of what your primary source of income is. Right. By you right. just making that small tweak and, and incorporating what you learned. Right. No, you know what? That's that's really deep advice, man, because that's that's the literal definition of investing in yourself, right? Literally. Mm -hmm. Literally, man. Because like I know a lot of us see courses and we're like, oh, these are kind of pricey. Or we see certain things we're like, oh, I don't know if it's worth it. But I guess there's that assuredness that you know if you're spending a half on a course that you're not too sure of, you put another half in something that's gonna grow indefinitely. Right? right. Which is you know, the the savings and the investment ones and stuff like that. Right, right. I mean, you think about it like this. Yeah. A lot of people will go spend two, three hundred dollars on a pair of Jordans and not question what are these Jordans going to do for me a year from now. Yeah. Yeah. But when you, when you, right. When you when you sit up here and say, hey, I'm going to teach you how to invest in the stocks. Or I'm going to teach you how to invest in the real estate or anything else. That's when everybody wants to ask all the questions. Yeah. Well, when am I going to make money and when is this going to return? And right. you know, well, how am right. I going to do this? But when it comes to buying a pair of shoes or an expensive bag or something like that, that, it's like, that. you know, the only question they got is how much is it after tax? So I can make right. sure I got a debit card. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> and, that you it's, know it's, it's just it's just backwards. You know yeah, what I'm it's, it's backwards. You know what it is? I've always found that it's that immediate gratification. It's that concept of like I can see the shoes now, and I just care about the now. You know, right. and I know a lot of us don't think about the tomorrows, right? Like you right. know the what ifs, the rainy days, right? right. Which is basically where we're in right now, the, the COVID right. situation. You know, and I know, I know a lot of people are kind of the lucky stars that if they already have savings, you know, if they have right. savings, they're like, I'm so glad I did that, you know, kind of thing. So um, I have a question here from someone. So someone said, I've never owned a part of Jordan's because I thought the same thing. Yeah, she's smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's a genius. She's a genius. She's a genius. I'm after to call <laughs> a genius. Um, someone said, is it wise to quit your nine to five without having a plan? No. So glad somebody asked. I get yeah. really concerned with people who teach that you need to quit your job. You need to quit it. You need to quit. You need to get out. That's that's one right. of the most. That's one of the most. Gosh, inappropriate and irresponsible things any adult could do. You should always have a okay. plan. And the next thing that you need to have after you have a plan okay. is you need to have consistent income. If I'm making six thousand dollars a right. month for my job. And I may, let's just say I have, you know, after working my business, I hit $10,000 one month. That shouldn't mean for me to go out and quit my job, right? You need to be hitting that 10000 consistently for, for six to eight months, right? Because if mm -hmm. you know how to consistently make that money, then, you know, then, then you can account for that. But if you make it one time, it's not ready to go and quit. And the thing is, is that you got to have an exit plan. You know, most <laughs> people don't have an exit plan. How are you going to properly exit? How are you going to replace the benefits that you get? We don't mm. think about that because mm. the thing is, is that an employer is going to pay a, a big chunk of your health insurance if you got good yeah. health insurance. Yeah. But when you go on your own, you yeah. got to go and pay. You're going to pay a lot more for health insurance because you got to pay the four hundred percent. Some yourself. employers pay By forty yourself. to sixty percent, and yeah. the you know everybody else pays you know the other forty. Mm. But now you got to pay a hundred percent of it. So can you afford that? You know, mm -hmm. now if you've been, you know, if you've been doing five percent four hundred one k match, and your employer's giving you five percent, now you got to come up with ten percent to keep up pace with your retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got to pay, you know, self employment tax. You got to pay, you know, if you get an LLC, you might have double taxation, so you're going to pay a higher tax than what you would as a, as a uh, business owner, and you're not going to get a lot of the tax benefits as an employee does, as far as if you got kids and different things where you get different tax credits. Yeah, you're going to get more loopholes for your business, but yeah. what people don't understand about business owners is we don't get returns and we don't look for them. Yeah. We yeah. want to we want to keep it to where we don't pay any money in and yeah. we don't get any money back. You know, we just want to keep things at even versus employees. They just want to get as much money back as possible. Yeah. And all it is was an interest fee loan that you gave in the first place. Right, right. Man, I think it, it all comes back to that whole living for today versus living for tomorrow mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. Let, let me tell you something, man, about that. I, I love what I love what you say about that. Yeah. There's there's people right now that's been living in the moment for the last 20 years, 10 mm -hmm. years, five years. What I mean by that is someone made a decision five years ago and they're making that decision every single day, five years later. So you got someone like 
it's 2015. I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to do good. I'm just, I'm just going to take care of myself. And it's 2020 and they're still doing that. They ain't got no savings. They don't have any assets, yeah. you know, outside of a 401k, they have no portfolio. They're yeah. living that same thing from five years ago. So the thing is, is that people literally live daily and, yeah. and not think about the future. And, yeah. and then when the future gets here, it's like, if you would have thought about this five years ago, you'd be in a different place, but you're still making the decision today that you did 365 times, times five times over the last five yeah. years. Yeah. So yeah. you made this decision over 2000 over. times. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you still in the same place. Yeah. And that's what that's what's hurting people. Man. So like, okay, here's the thing. A, a lot of us in, in like if someone subscribed to you, they care about their, you know, their future. If someone subscribed to you, they care about the life and they consider it for, you know, the people around them and you know, they don't want anything to get messed up. But then let's say you have kids, for instance, or you have friends, or you have mm -hmm. people that, you know, don't currently have that kind of mindset. How do you direct people to stop thinking more like that because I mentor a lot of younger people and you know you become the OG sometimes right when you say things like this and just right. like oh man you just shine out your ass whatever right right, right. How, how do you convince or make people realize things like this when they're not open to it to begin with but you just know that this will kind of bite you in the ass in the future when I find out I'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the reason I say that man is because <laughs> You can sit up here, you can show people, hey, this is what you can, this is what you can do. Yeah. I can show people how much I made from it. I can yeah. show people that I actually do it. I can yeah. show them everything from top to bottom. Yeah. And they'll still find a way to question if it's truly real. Yeah. So to be yeah. honest with you, I really don't know. Here's the two things that a person is, is a new business owner. Here's the two things that you're always going to struggle with. You're right. going to struggle with your mindset and your audience's mindset. Right, right. I have over 28,000, you know, 25,000 followers just on Instagram. But not right. everybody, you know, gets my coaching. Not everybody buys my courses, right? A lot of people do, but not everybody does. Mm -hmm. But I'll get comments or I'll get DMs all the time. Hey, I really want to do this. Hey, I really want to do that. And it's like, okay, good, man. I'm glad you're there. So here's what you need to do. Here, here's the link to, to this to set up a, you know, a time to work with me. Or here's the link to, to a course. That'll help you. Mm. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll check it out, and I'll never hear from them again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That so, uh, yeah. It's I get them every single day, right. and so for me, it's like you know, I used to spend like 30 minutes in the DM, sometimes an hour in the DM, just DMing people back and forth, trying to get them to catch the vision. And mm. I had to stop doing that because I would I would look up, and hours gone by. Mm. They're like, okay, I'll check it out, and I won't hear nothing else. I'm like, I just spent an hour with you, yeah. you know, breaking all this down and you still didn't make a decision, you know? So the thing is, is man, I really don't know. Um, yeah. You just yeah. got some people that they're either tired and they're ready for a change mm -hmm. or they're just one of those people that they finally woke up and they decided I want better for my family. There's something yeah. in their lives that happened that causes them to want better. Yeah. The, 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 the scary situation about the climate they were in is that you just don't have enough people that want better. Yeah. And, yeah. and I hate to say that, but that's just, yeah. that's just the realness. You just don't have enough people that want better. They say they want better, but they don't want better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, but that's so weird because we're in the capitalist system, right? And that's the only way the system kind of works, right? There have to be winners and there have to be losers. If all have the same vision and hold the same drive and can't all eat, if that makes sense. Right. Which is unfortunate, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of people want everything microwave and doesn't want to and don't want to work for it. That's true. Um, someone mentioned procrastination, right? Um, if Okay, so another thing is, if you're an overwhelmed person, you have a lot of things in your head, but you just don't execute, you know, um, what advice would you give to people like that? Like, just my, leave things. My <laughs> advice is the same thing that my coach uh, you know, and brother it taught me is that you need to have uh, what you call block out time. Yeah. Uh, block out time is where you basically just lock in. So the best thing for you to do is when you have block out time, you go and you put your phone in another room on silent where you can't hear it. And you know what I'm saying? You go and you say, okay, from two to four, I'm locking in on the, on these things. Um, mm -hmm. You see, I have a whiteboard right here and I have a list of things on my whiteboard 
uh, that you guys can see right there. I have a list of things on my whiteboard that I do on a daily basis. I have tonight, I'll have Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll have columns of everything that I do on those days. And I have, and throughout the day, if I find time, I'll address them, but I have a, lot, a block out time that all I'm doing is checking things off that list. And, I, and I'm basically staying locked in until every single box is checked, and then I come up for water. You know, I check my messages, return calls, spend some time with my family, and, you know what I'm saying, move on with my day. So it's very important for people to have block out time because that's one of the best ways uh, to avoid procrastination. But let me give you guys another piece of advice. Have block out time for your health as well. This is mm -hmm. something I just started incorporating. I have over an hour a day that I, uh, that I block out for cardio, walking, and, you know, doing resistance things because I'm trying to get, you know, trying to get myself in order, you know, because, you know, I'm the most valuable asset I have. But if I'm yeah. not taking care of the inside asset, the outside one's going to suffer, too. Okay. So I think I think you got to have block out time and you got to make sure that you're addressing that block out time. You're not using it as optional. You're not, you know, saying, well, I'll just take 30 minutes from block out time and use that to play uh, Madden or, or NBA 2K. No, your yeah. block out time yeah. is the block out time. That's to get stuff done. And then let's say you get it done 30 minutes sooner. Okay, you can go get on NBA 2K and Madden. Yeah. But you got to get that block out time in, and that's going to be a remedy to procrastination. Okay, okay. That's interesting. I mean, the next one for me is um, a question on, I think a lot of well, potential entrepreneurs have this thing. Um, and, and I've asked a few of my friends this question because I'm similar. I'm one of those people that likes to bring people in, right? I don't like to succeed by myself. I like to... Wherever I see a path, a journey of success, I like, let me bring a friend in, let me bring someone else in. And sometimes I find it to my hindrance as well. You know, um, I was trying to help people, but at the same time, it does hold me back sometimes, you know. But you hear stories that you can't get anywhere by yourself. And some stories like the Warren Buffett's of the world, the Jeff Bezos, they're like, oh, they did it by themselves. You know, so in terms of actually the entrepreneurial mindset, is it a, a solo journey or is it best to go with someone? And if you are going with someone, is it with friends or is it best not to have that kind of relationship? We would love to bring our friends with us. But here's the thing that I found out about my friends. My friends don't believe that you can, if I come to my, if I came to my friends before, uh, you know, friends that I've had and um, said, hey, you know, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? Yeah. They're going to think that it can't be done. It might sound good. They'll be on board with it. But whenever it's time to do the work, oh, man, you know, I got some stuff going on. Yeah, and, you know, they don't want to do it. But yeah. as soon as they see you have success from it, bro, Jump. you got to teach me that, man. <laughs> you got to put me on game. You got to put your boy on. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, and then it becomes, like you said, it becomes a hindrance because then you're like, okay, you know, well, at least you came here. Yeah. And they don't want you to teach them. They want you to do it for them. Right, You know, right. Well, 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 can you do this for me? And then just show me that I'll do it next time. And then before you know it, it's like you're building two businesses, but you're only yeah, profiting from one. Yeah. So for me, I think what it is, is it's very important as a new entrepreneur to connect with other like-minded people mm -hmm. and try to build some type of a foundation there with other people. It's mm -hmm. not to say that we don't love our friends and family and things like that, or we're trying to like outgrow them. But what it is, mm -hmm. is that we can't be the person that's always making the moves. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah. I surround myself with people that are always doing better than me. If you're doing better than me, you, you know, if you call me, I'm going to answer. If you text me, you know, right. you're going to get the number my mama's got. You right. know what I'm saying? Because ever since I started doing that, my income is, it, you know, continue to increase because, right. you know, it's not that I'm trying to chase them, but I know that it's possible because I'm seeing how they're living. I'm seeing yeah. how they're So right. for me, it's like, okay, now that I know that this, in my mind, it's like a constant level up is on my mm -hmm. mind. So, mm -hmm. like, for instance, the other day, I have a course that I teach people uh, how to fix their credit. I've mm -hmm. had that course for two and a half years. I mm -hmm. wanted to, uh, you know, look at some things. My course was very low priced. So I went out and bought a course that was twice the amount of my course just to see how mine's lined up to it. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. I paid almost $600 just to yeah. see what this other person how this other person's content lines up with mine. Right, right. Yeah. Now, some people can't even fathom spend $100 on themselves, mm -hmm. let alone to do some recon, right? Yeah. But if you would have, two years ago, I would have been like, look, I don't care what they're doing, man. I'm going to keep this quarter, you know. But, you know, for me now, it's like, you know, as a business man, right? Because mm -hmm. now I'm in business. Mm -hmm. As a business man, it's important for me to see what's happening out there. 
what how am I lining up with other people? I've gotten into coaching sessions with other coaches that do what I do, sometimes to get a better way of how I can prove my coaching, other ways to see how their intake form process is, how's their, you know, how they do their sessions, different things like that. So I make investments into my business in multiple ways and I don't spare any expense for it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I spent 10 yeah. grand in my business just last month. So yeah. the thing about it is that, you know, if I, if I know I want to have, you know, day, like, you know, if I, if I know I want to have months, days like I do months, then yeah. I got to go out there and find out the people that are doing that or quote unquote say they're doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What, what are they, what am I not doing and what am I leaving out so I can go yeah. and improve that? No, that's, that's, that's really sound advice, man. It's like what they say, you know, you're only as good as the people that you have around you, you know, right. show me your friends and I'll show you who you are, that kind of thing. You right. know, that's that's interesting because I've always wondered, do coaches have coaches? You know, that's always yeah. been in the back of my head. I've got two coaches. I've got a, I've got right. a business coach. Yeah. Um, I've got a, well, three. No, I've got a business coach. I've got a branding coach. And I've got a sales coach. Uh, I am actually in the process of hiring a life coach just to right. Right. help me with things outside of business, you know, just right. becoming a better man and things like that. I think it's very important, especially at the level that I'm I'm getting to. Mm. It's very important that I keep this up here intact. So mm. uh, I'm going to hire a mindset life coach uh, to mm. help me keep my mindset and and improve that. So uh, I, I think every most coaches have a coach. Right. It, it just okay. that's just how it is. Now, like um, back to the question about the current climate, right? Um, how have you found it in terms of affecting your business? Like you personally, is it more on a positive level or more on a negative in terms of, you know, since COVID and quarantine hit, you know, how has it affected your personal business? It tripled my business. Yeah. My business tripled in profit starting in April. Wow. Okay. And it's consistently almost went up 25% every month since April. Yikes. I've had the best run I've ever had since I've been in business my entire life. Wow. In, in a three month span. But 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 the reason that it was mm -hmm. was because I was ready. I was yeah, prepared. I had I had things out. Here's the thing that I tell people, man. When COVID hit and you send all these people went home and they were on unemployment, yeah, you can only watch so much Netflix, man. You can only watch so much Hulu. <laughs> to where when you go and watch somebody's live, you got to pay attention. You, yeah. you ain't thinking about the next episode of Married with Medicine. Or right. Real Housewives of Atlanta, right. or right. whatever it is right. that people watch, you think about you don't watch all the episodes. They're not filming anymore because they don't shut all the film studios down. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, I gotta like lock in now. Yeah. Yeah. So people have literally been like, okay, well, I guess I'll learn something. And I'm thinking to myself, think of all the people if they would have did this last year before. Yeah. When, yeah. When, before it happened. Yeah. 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 I got a client right now that uh, that uh, worked with me, and uh, they started with me back in April, and in July they had their first five thousand dollar a month, um, you know, by starting out. And yeah, she she was very month. honest with me. She said, you know, one of the reasons that uh, she's I've been following you for years, but you know, I just never, I, I just, I don't know why I didn't work with you sooner. And yeah. I said, well, I, I do. She's like, wow. I was like, because you don't have nothing else taking up your your time. Yeah. And, she kind of looked, and I was like, you know, since COVID, well, uh, you know, how when you go? How long has it been since you've been out of work? Since the end of March. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, you know, what have you done since you've been out of work? Nothing. We don't go anywhere. They wouldn't let us leave anywhere in the state. I said, okay. And I was just asking these questions, and before she knew, she's like, oh, I right. Said, yeah. We create distractions from us. Yep. You know right. what I'm saying? We create right. distractions from the success that we want. Right. You know, up on Instagram, I'm posting three to five times a day leading up to COVID. I didn't know COVID was coming, but I'm grinding. So I'm posting three to five times a day. I started on Instagram in um, September of 2019. Mm. So I just less, less, less than a year. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Was, was it last year? Yeah. 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 Because it was right when I got back from FinCon or right before I went to FinCon. Right. So it was, it was right before FinCon, so I think it was around June, July, something like that. Anyway, it's been, it's been about a year. But yeah. I was posting three to five times a day, studying, just grinding. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And so whenever COVID hit, I'm going live. All of a sudden, you know, I'm getting five, six people in my lives whenever I was going live before. Now right. I'm getting 50, 60, 70 people right. when yeah. COVID came. And people were, like, really paying attention, really asking questions, really asking for links. And... Mm -hmm. I'll say over the last three months, I haven't had to sell anything. People literally ask, 
hey, where can I get, do you offer training on this? Do you offer coaching? Yeah. People have been trying to sell me on working with them. Sell me yeah. on where can, where can I go and get more information about you? I haven't had to do anything. Wow. But the thing is, is that it was my preparation leading up to <laughs> this to where when this moment produced itself, I was already in position to be mm. ready. Yeah. No, I think that's a big one, man. Like that whole fail to prepare, prepare to fail sentiment. It's yeah. all over that. You know what I mean? It's like, because you never know. Like, like you said, this stuff is not predictable. So why not just be ready anyway? You feel stay me? Why ready not you don't ready? have to get ready. Yeah, stay ready now to get ready. No, yeah. that's, that's, that's dope. No, George, um, I've got nine minutes. Nine minutes because the live is one hour. And I don't want to hold people for too long. You know, this has been very valuable, bro. I really appreciate it. I have a few more questions I do want to ask you, but I might actually just sign up to your coaching stuff and actually ask you personally on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we can kind of continue this going forward. I really appreciate that. But, you know, like I mentioned in the beginning, man, the, the, the faith that you have in, like, you know, your religion and stuff like that, how does that feed into your day-to-day -day practices in terms of business and stuff like that? Well, my faith is what, is what's making me believe that I can do the things that I'm doing right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. My flesh, George Pitts, I wouldn't have been able to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm just not, I, I'm not mentally there in my flesh. Now I, I, I may be now, but when I started, mm -hmm. I wasn't there. So mm -hmm. when, 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 you know, I believe Solomon, you know, Solomon was the wisest man ever to live in the Bible. Yeah. Right. But he's yeah. also the richest man. He, I mean, yeah. Solomon was richer than Jeff Bezos. He's yeah. richer than Manson Musa, right? right? He was the richest man to ever live. If you go and read Ecclesiastes and Kings, you'll read that. But one of the things that Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2 is, cast your bread upon the water, for after many days you will find it. Meaning mm -hmm. that, you know, put your, you know, put your money in different places, wait a couple of days or wait a period of time, and when you come back, it'll be there, right? And you can read the translation. There's multiple translations, but that's one that, that is. And then the other one is it says, uh, Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, uh, you know, invest your portion in seven. Yes, eight things, for you never know what disaster will come upon the land. What he was saying there is put your money, your portion, which is your money, into seven to eight different things, mm -hmm. multiple streams of income, because you never know what's going to come on the land that could take away one. What do they say most millionaires have? Uh, have They have at least seven <laughs> streams of income, right? So the thing is, is that, you know, these things have already been written, and, yeah. you know, it says that I can do all these things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. So the thing is, is that because my, my, my faith is I believe the scriptures that I read, that when it says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, um, you know, Luke nineteen thirteen talks about how Jesus said, and this applies to everybody in here. Uh, you know, Jesus was given a parable saying there was a man that was going out to, to take uh, the kingdom. And he's talking about himself. And he said, so he called uh, three of his servants. He gave one servant 10 talents. He gave one servant five talents and he gave another one one. Mm -hmm. And he told them to go out and he says, you know, go and um, do business until I return or yeah. occupy until yeah. I return. Right. And so what occupy means is to go and to take over and work within that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the first person came back. He said, you know, I did what you told. I had my 10 talents. I turned it into 20, and I, and I could be wrong on the talents. I'm, yeah, I, I, I think remember. it was 5, 3, 1. But, but anyway, all yeah. of them doubled except for the one with the least amount. Yeah. He said he buried mine because he said I buried it because I didn't, you know, I know you're a hard person. I didn't want to lose your money. Right. And he said he was very angry with him because he said if you would have just put it in an account to draw interest, you would have yeah. made more money from it. Yeah. So he took much. his talent and gave it to the one that did it, and he cast it out. And yeah. what that scripture tells me is that we all get these gifts, these talents that we're supposed to use. And many people are literally burying them in their backyard mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. doing some kind of an earthly talent that we weren't supposed to do. Some mm -hmm. people are horrible at customer service, yet they're doing customer service as a job. Mm -hmm. Some people are horrible at sales. That's not their talent, but they're out here selling cars and houses. Yeah. They're not using their talents. Because they don't believe the scripture that, that, that says your gifts will make room for you and put you in mm -hmm. front of great men. So the thing about it is that at the end of the day, a person has to get really serious about the things that they read. Everybody mm -hmm. in, in, you know, loves to get a word from a prophet or a word saying you're going to get, you know, double portion this season. You're going to yeah. start a business this season. And mm -hmm. it's like we become kids where we think that a stork is going to fly yeah. in and deliver a business. Yeah or deliver yeah. double portion and we don't feel that we can do it. So yeah. the thing is that when people start to be, you know, believe in what it is that they see or believe in what it is that they read, 
they're going to still be in bondage in Egypt, just like the people before Moses came and took them out. Yeah, no, hundred percent, man. Believe in the divinity in yourself. You know, you know, um, our greatest fear is that you know we, we're not powerful to to achieve what we can achieve within ourselves, right? Right. No. Right. No, George, this has been really insightful. Man. I really appreciate your time. So, like I said, man, thanks a lot for accepting this um this live. And Absolutely. I know, you know, the people, like, the tuned in really appreciated it. And it's going to be on my IGTV anyway, so people can watch it over. I'm definitely going to edit it and put it on YouTube as well, so people can always come back to it. And I'm going to start throwing snippets all over the place, because there's a value all over it. You feel me? So I really appreciate the time. So I'll reach out to you again after this, and we can start our one-ones as well. You know, that'll be great. All right, well, man. I appreciate you. People don't want to do the work. They want it to fill in their laps. Yep, 100%. Yep. George Pierce, Mr. George Pierce, thank you very much, sir. Hopefully, your blessings continue as they have been threefold, fourfold, four, fivefold, tenfold. Yeah, you know I mean, a thousand more fold, See man. You. God willing. And, bro, London's here. Where am I? London's here. When you're ready, when things are down, quarantine's down, come through. We'll look after you. Man, I tell you what. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do that. You got my word, man. When quarantine is down, I'm gonna come see you, man. We're gonna do a live together. Sick, sick, sick. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. All man. right, bro. the family, sir. Thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it. All right, bro. I appreciate you. Love. Take care. Have a good day. What's it called? No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Okay. Keeping it raw. Keeping it real.